Hi, welcome to another episode. As you've just seen in the last episode, we were away for a week in the Transcar. We went to test gear. Unfortunately, conditions were not great, so we ended up fishing. Uh, today, we're going to go back to the not episodes, specifically to react to comments that have been made. We were shown another knot we're going to bring on and also the fact that all these knots are used underwater and having them wet is actually a very good idea to see how they would perform underwater opposed to dry. I've made up five of the knots, four of the old knots and one new knot will show you and these have been soaking for several hours in salt water. Salt water comes from our test tank where we do our timberline guns so Salt content is the same if anybody questions that, how it'll affect it compared to fresh water, no idea. So before I start, one of the comments was, why do we not use a Bromel lock knot? It's a type of splice which is done in a hollow core. We don't use hollow core for the simple reason, the cord we use has an inner core. This gives it stiffness. As you can see, it will hold and take a set. This is also Dyneema, we just have it colored black. As you can see, very floppy. Just as strong, if not stronger, if you have the same amount of filaments. And we do use this, but only inside bungees, gun bungees, blue water bungees. We also use this on our drop barb, purely because it's easier to handle the water and you want it to be floppy. But as a spear line, it'll be very strong. But being this floppy will entangle much easier. Mono being much stiffer is your best option in terms of handleability, and this is probably the second best. As you can see, it holds the set quite well. So this is why we don't use hollow core and finger trap or Brummel lock style knots. Let's get to the knot testing. First one we're gonna test, just for a reference, our classic Rob Allen knot. So, we're ready now with the classic Rob Allen knot. And it's still wet. Let's see how that performs. Tensioning up. Anything over 100 is good. Here we go. I think that was 140 plus. That's our benchmark. Let's test the rest. So the previous one, which is our standard knot we use, went at 132 odd kgs. I'm now gonna do the wet bowline. Somebody made a comment that there's another type of bowline where you have an extra two twists. Apparently it's called a Yosimat bowline. We'll test that one as well. You can Google it and uh, see how it's done. Also looks a bit large, but let's see how that works. And here we go. Wet bowline. Went about 70 plus last time. We're just over that now. Starting to slip. Holding quite well, but slipping. I can see it getting shorter and shorter. Both ends are slipping now but at around 100, 100 plus, which is not bad at all. Here we go, that broke. Being wet seemed to have actually improved the bowline. I would still be skeptical to use it. Previous tests haven't been great. Now we'll test the Yosimite bowline with the extra loops. Slightly large, but can only be an improvement.
holding pretty well. A little bit of slippage as the tension's up. But slipping slowly all around 100. Just keep slipping now. So even with that additional two loops, it is slipping. Just slips. Strange. I would have thought it would have been better. With a larger knot, it will cause drag. Drag is not that big a deal. You can pile the rubber up more to compensate for the added drag. The problem is trying to get that larger knot and the spear out through the muzzle at the same time could inhibit the performance and bump the spear and cause an inaccuracy. So I'd be reluctant to go too large in a knot like the reverse figure of eight, which we're about to test now and any other large knot. And here's the follow through figure of eight. Performed very well in the last tests. Here we go. Follow through figure of eight. As mentioned before, slightly larger than our conventional knot, but it did outperform in the dry state. Let's see how it does in the wet. Very good. And there it broke. I think that was 150 odd. Not bad at all, only disadvantage, slightly larger than a conventional. The knot we're gonna test now is one commonly used by fishermen. They call it a, some people call it a Rapala knot because it's a common knot they use to tie their lures on to make tie a big loop in their leader to give the lure most action. It's very similar to the Rob Allen knot. The last two loops, instead of the second loop being wound back on itself, they stay in the same plane and then it comes all the way back. It does produce slightly larger hump. Let's see how it performs. I think it'll be exactly the same. So now we have the Rapala knot or fishing knot, the knot you would use in your leader to create a large loop. And it's been soaking as well, also wet. Let's see how that goes. Holding well for now. Something tensioned up there, but still very good. Cool. Around 140 odd, which is about conventional that we have for our, the knot we use on all our spheres. Well, there you have it. Interesting option to test when wet, which is obviously how these knots are being used in the environment. We should have thought about that in the past. Thanks for the comments. Please keep them coming.